core responsibility of a product manager is to analyze the performance of their product. After all, by analyzing product performance, product managers can drive impact. By determining how to further optimize traffic and conversion, by diagnosing bugs or problematic user experiences, and by testing new strategies and new markets. During product manager interviews, hiring managers will focus on your analytic skills by asking you to analyze a metric on the fly. Metric interview questions test if candidates can perform data analysis and select key metrics that matter most to the success of a product. Most employers out there use these questions to evaluate critical thinking and communication skills. Metric change questions test if you know what to do when a key product metric, for example, traffic or revenue or engagement is going up or down. There are many different reasons for a product metric to go up or down and an interviewer will want to see you take a bulletproof approach to find the root cause of the issue. A common mistake candidates make when answering metric questions is to provide an unstructured answer. So let's walk through a step-by-step -step approach you can use to avoid that pitfall specifically for metric change questions. So we use a three-step approach to help you give a clear and thorough answer to metric change questions. Let's walk through each one of these three steps one by one. Step one is define the metric change. Many candidates, they skip this step and start listing ideas in an unstructured way. This is a big red flag for your interviewers. Before starting to answer the question, you need to define the metric change in detail. This often entails asking for three pieces of information, which is one, the exact definition of the metric we are talking about, second, the time period over which the metric has changed, and third, the characteristics of the user segment impacted by the change. Step two is to explore possible root causes of the change. Interviewers, they want to see that you are thinking of every possible problem which could cause the metric change you are investigating. In order to ensure you are thinking comprehensively and communicating clearly, you should 1. Create a BC framework for possible root causes, where BC stands for mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. Post that, you should actually go ahead and brainstorm potential root causes to the problem within this framework and discuss the different root causes identified with your interviewer. Generally, one can split their investigation between internal and external factors. Internal factors include possible problems internal to the organization that can help the problem sessions and similarly external factors include the possible problems outside. Note that the above framework is BC, mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. The root cause of the problem has to be internal or external as there is no other option. Once you have created your framework, you need to brainstorm ideas and possible causes within each of the areas you have identified. The interviewer will most likely stop you to talk about some of the proposed root causes which is perfectly normal. Listen carefully to what they say as they will often provide clues that will point you in the right direction. At the end of step 2, you will most probably have your answer or your identified features. Step 3 is conclusion. Finally, you should conclude by summarizing your findings related to the initial question you were asked. If time permits, do explore certain plausible solutions for the problem identified with your interviewer as well. So now that you know how to approach a metric change question, let's apply this approach to a mock interview setting. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm good. The question that I have for you today is, you are a PM at Samato. Your data analyst comes up to you and tells you that there is a spike at breakfast, dinner, and lunch time. However, at lunch, the conversion is 2% when compared to dinner and breakfast where the conversion is as high as 10%. How would you go about solving this problem? All right. Just to make sure I got the question correctly, basically I'm wearing the hat of a PM for Zomato and I'm reported by my data analyst that there is a spike at breakfast, lunch and dinner times but the conversion while being at 10% for breakfast and dinner, it's only 2% for lunch, correct? 
Yes. All right. So give me a minute so as to devise my approach. Sure. Perfect. Let me give you the approach I'll take. First, I'm going to make sure I understand the product correctly. Second, I'll focus on brainstorming possible root causes where I'll take a beefy approach to the problem. Post that, we'll go deeper into the relevant issues to identify the root cause of our metric being so low. Sounds like a plan? Sounds good. Go ahead. So, Zomato is a food delivery service where users log in via mobile or web application. They go ahead and select a particular user. They add individual food items to their cart. They go ahead and pay and check out. Now, the delivery service then actually goes ahead and submits the orders to gig economy workers who pick up the food and deliver it to the customer. I'm currently seeing a trend whereby traffic spikes at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but the conversion rate is much lower around lunchtime. And I'm tasked with figuring out why conversion is so low at lunch. I have a few clarifying questions. One, what is the exact meaning of conversion? Does it mean number of purchases upon number of app searches or does it mean number of purchases divided by number of items added to cart? Like what exactly is the meaning? For our discussion today, you can assume conversions is equal to number of purchases divided by number of app searches. All right. So it's number of purchases upon number of app searches. Perfect. All right, next, uh, over what period of time have you observed this? This has happened over the past six months in a gradual way. Okay. Third, what was the conversion rate for lunch before this analysis was done? Is it increased for others or decreased for lunch? What was it? As mentioned, conversion rates have been decreasing gradually for lunchtime for six months now. Okay, makes sense. All right. Next, uh, is there any particular geography that we are seeing this trend in? Ah uh, yes, this trend is mostly seen in large metros lately. Alright, now uh, I think we should go ahead and map the user journey and identify the factors that contribute to conversion in the food delivery app. One is around search and discovery, where users actually open an application and they can search with different attributes, for example, restaurants, dish type, cuisines, etc. Second, once the user actually likes something, users add these items in the cart and make a purchase decision. Basis delivery time, basis on the cost of purchase and the coupon discount available. And step three is payment, where finally user selects one of the payment options available in the application. Now, what I'll do is I would like to analyze the conversion contributor metrics associated with three stages identified above and compare them across the three meal times and identify if there are any discrepancies in the process. All right, so firstly, has there been any discrepancy that we have seen in terms of discount options available at lunch versus at dinner or breakfast? No, this has not been the case. All right, that rules this out. Uh, next, has there been any issue with the payment process time? If so, I think we can easily solve this by adding a delayed payment option to be included during lunch, but has there been any issue there? No, payment process time is consistent across the three meal time zones. Perfect. Uh, next, uh, is food menu to be blamed here? That is, are users unable to find the searched item during lunch time in the results? No, that is not the case. Okay, I have another question. Uh, during which stage of the order journey is the customer dropping off during lunchtime? That is such an interesting one. So typically, we are seeing a drop at step three, which is payments. Customers add food to their cart, but they are not going through the payment options. Okay, this definitely helps us in a good way. Uh, I have one or two more questions and let's cover those points uh, that I have in my mind and then we'll definitely dive deeper into this particular point again. Alright, so what I want to do next is I want to analyze if there are any external factors that are contributing to this phenomenon. So a competitor brand's offering something during lunch which seems like a tempting offer? 
Well we do see this every now and then, but I don't think that has ever caused such a drastic drop in conversion rates. Alright, it looks like there is something happening at step 3 of the overall user journey. Now for our analysis, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that food delivery is opted majorly by people staying outside home for work. Now this is a viable assumption in my opinion because uh, with the pandemic slightly under control, workforce is returning to sites in big metros across India. Now, if you think about it, one plausible reason that I can think of is that usually breakfast and dinner would be ordered from residents while lunch would be taken at office. Now, often in short time in between meetings as well. So the food delivery time plus the path to be traveled inside the office premises to get the parcel would be higher during lunch. However, again, this is just a hypothesis and we need to check it with the relevant metrics here. So to test my hypothesis, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and look at the following two metrics or following two parameters. One, what exactly is the conversion rate of lunch during weekends? Second, what's the percentage of abandoned cards at lunchtime versus breakfast versus dinner? Now, if our hypothesis is tested and it comes out to be true, uh, which means that the conversion rate of lunch at weekends is higher, then Somato have two options in my opinion. One, they can actually hire more delivery folks who can bring food in the shortest amount of time, or else they might consider corporate tie-ups inside canteens to solve this issue. And if it comes out to be true, uh, then in conclusion, so Somato's lunch conversion rate is low compared to dinner or breakfast, and this has been happening because lunch order generally comes from people who are returning to their work site and they have been swaying away from ordering food by looking at the delivery time on the payment screen of the Zomato app. And to rectify this, Zomato should actually consider corporate tie-ups inside canteens at corporate office buildings. That sounds like a sound reasoning and approach. Thanks. Take care and have a good day. Bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, so that was one possible answer to a product metric question. Now, product management is all about working in concentric circles. So start where you have the most control, which is the product that you are managing. If you rule out any problems with your product, start working outwards to other product teams, then to other stakeholders. If you still can't find anything within your organization, then it's time to look outward. Again, start where you have the most influence. Begin with the customer and the users, then look at competitors, then look at economics and the geography. However, as a general guidance, know that the first principle of any metric is that metrics are only representations of reality. In other words, metrics themselves can be flawed for many reasons. The tool might be broken, the data could be bad, or the metric definition may not make sense at all. Hence, for any product metric questions, try to look at the following 10 parameters. One, check the tool to make sure it's accurate. Second, check the underlying data to make sure that's accurate. Third, look back into history for any patterns in the data. Four, consider recent changes you have shipped in your application. Five, slice and dice your data. Six, Look for recent changes shipped by other teams in your organization. 7. Consider any changes that your company may have introduced outside of the product. 8. Look for changes in user behavior or customer trends. 9. Conduct competitive analysis. 10. Look for macroeconomic or geographical changes in your area. Now, why do we suggest this, you may ask? We suggest this framework because it's mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. It covers all of the possibilities for why the metric could have changed. On top of that, this framework is fantastic for highlighting your analytical rigor, your product strategy skills, and your ability to think in terms of individual systems. Again, remember that you won't necessarily tackle each one within the interview, especially because interviews are generally shorter in nature. So if you explain your framework to the interviewer right at the beginning, they might say something like, okay, let's just focus on the data analytics, no need to conduct competitor research. 
and from there what you can do is you can actually go ahead and you can infer that you should be looking at only the data parameters remember that analytics questions are meant to determine how structured you are when it comes to analysis therefore you shouldn't expect to make it through every single point in this framework now when practicing practice under the same time constraints that you would have in an interview take no longer than 30 minutes to answer the question check to see whether you can explain your framework concisely then dive into one or two of the areas of the framework similar to how an interviewer would ask you to focus now another crucial point to keep in mind product managers should always be biased towards actions what we mean by this is once you identify the root cause of a change in the metric whether positive or negative you should always follow up immediately with action items find ways to exploit the positive upswing or find ways to rectify a rapidly dropping metric all right that's it for today feel free to put in your ideas comments or responses in the comment section down below if you like this video give it a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one